to be floored that it that it didn't hurt others. Yes, she did. Um, in fact, she said when she first noticed it, that was her initial thought, was it, that it was going to go down right there, right on the interstate. She thought that it could have easily hit her car. And so she, you heard her say there that what she noticed was that she used the word veer. To her, she saw the helicopter move a little farther over from the interstate into the grass. And she made a note of that. That's what she noticed about it. And that's one of the reasons that she wanted to reach out to us because that's, that's you know, made an impression on her that that was part of what was happening there as the helicopter was going down. And she described, you know, I'm, I'm sure later you can hear some more from her. She had a lot of things to say about this, but she was telling me she knew that it was in trouble because of the speed with which it was coming to the ground. And she knew that and the, the movements. Um, and she... I, I, I know, it's just a. Um, she said she's having a hard time processing what she saw. But again, it seemed like the thing that really stayed with her was her perception that the helicopter moved to avoid causing further damage, or in her words, causing a lot of chaos on the interstate. Uh, David, I think our longest tenured on-air uh, person right now, and. Uh, well, David, you know we love you to death, and we appreciate you, and um, we lean on you on times like this, too, because of um, your faith, and we're going to all lean on that faith, aren't we, over the next uh, weeks and months ahead? Yeah, and as ridiculous as social media is, I've got to say that the way that people have shown this outpouring of support for this television station and Jason's family and Chip's family has really been overwhelming in a positive way. You know, you, we, there's so much bad stuff, and yet I've seen so many people saying, I'm, I'm praying for them, I'm praying for their family, I'm praying for your TV station, I'm praying for you, you know, all that stuff. And, and I know that stuff matters. It, it, it makes a difference. You can feel it. And I know people are doing that, and there's strength in that. And so if you're praying for us, I just want you to know that it's appreciated and it's noticed. But really, be on your knees for Jason's family and for Chip's family. They're going to need to feel that comfort and to feel that strength. They're, they're just going to have to have it. Now, we are too, but, you know, obviously they're the, the family. They're going to need it immediately. And I just, it, again, yeah, it, it, uh, it's amazing to get that support. It, it just is. You're right. You know, social media can actually do a lot of good, and there can be a lot of bonding through that and a lot of connection through that when used in the right ways. And so, David, you said it well. Thank you to this community right now who in these instant moments, you know, it's been four hours, and most of us are, are just processing and trying to figure out where to go from here. And so to feel that support in words and in people sharing kindness, that is a really strong... Um, comfort to many of us and at some point hopefully Jillian and Chip's wife can also also feel that so David Wisnett you are David Wisnett and we are so grateful and thankful to have you with us thank you David um, we have crossed over into the four o'clock hour right now and we just want to kind of reset everything for you if you're just getting home and turning on the television this afternoon Oh, we are on the air still because of the two faces, the two names you see there on your screen right now, Chip Tag and Jason Myers. They were aboard our helicopter Sky 3 this afternoon, shortly after 12 o'clock today, when that helicopter went down in the southern part of Mecklenburg County, just off Interstate 77 South, near Nations Ford. There were no survivors. They were the only two aboard the helicopter. Nobody else on the ground was hurt. We are hearing that is because of the evasive measures taken by our helicopter pilot, Chip, who's been a contract employee for WBTV for a number of years. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but he's been here a long time. Jason's also been with us now for several years. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, Molly, this was his this was his dream job. He was coming home. He was from this area and worked in other places around the country, and he got the job here at WBTV. And their smiles right there you see on those pictures is how they live their lives every single day here at WBTV and in our community. And uh, we're hurting. We're hurting bad. We are hurting, and um, our chief meteorologist, Al Conklin, is certainly hurting, Jamie. And we want to welcome Al here in to the desk and the studio, and most importantly, Al, the conversation. Jason and you were um, very good friends, and thank you for, for being here. 
honestly, my, I didn't know where else to go or what else to do. Right. Um, my family, for, yeah, first of all, let me, let me give you a hug, buddy. Yeah, but, uh, you know that. Um, Molly. We love you. You guys are doing a great job. Um, yeah, I went out to lunch with my, my son and my wife. Uh, they've already left for the coast for Thanksgiving. I'm going to meet up with them tomorrow and um, just a regular old Tuesday. And right. then this happened. Um, you know, uh, so I'm home by myself and I just don't know what to do. So I felt like I needed to be here with you guys. Come and to family, with, right? With my team, right. 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 Um, exactly right. You, we're, we are family. Uh, you know, uh, I spoke with Eric and, and Paul and so many of our good friends and our former colleagues. You know, we're all teammates. We're all, when you leave this place, you're still family, yep. you know? Yep. And uh, we're all in a little bit of shock, you know? Um, obviously, um, you don't expect something like this. And that's kind of what I was thinking about today is that, um, now my point is that, uh, you know, when Eric retired, I, I was named chief meteorologist mm -hmm. and uh, the station asked me to come to nights. You know, it right. was the logical thing to do. Sure. But because we do things in a family way, they knew that would upset my family life because I've been in the morning with John and, right. and Christine and Mary and Abby and for so long that they said, you know what, stay where you stay are. There, yeah. It's more important you be with your family. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out a way forward with Rachel, Rachel and Jason and we're doing great with them. And part of my routine every morning at two o'clock when I'm driving in, I don't listen to the radio, I say my prayers. Mm -hmm. it's, Nobody's going to call me. Nobody's going to bother me. So mm -hmm. I have quiet time with the, you know, the good Lord. And you know, you pray for things like uh, your family and and your coworkers, and that you're going to be a good leader and do the best that you possibly can um, at your job. They don't teach you this kind of day in meteorology school. No. You know, no. No. 37 years they never teach you how you lose a teammate in an instant or teammates, two of them. Um, and it's just. It's, but, but I'm going to tell you, Jason, um, phenomenal forecaster, you know, um, I feel so bad for his family right now, um, and I know we all do, um, and, you know, we are pr my phone is on fire like everybody right. else's. I want to thank everybody that's praying for us, because as, as David Wisnett said, we need your prayers right now, and his family needs them more than any. Um, we're not immediate family, but we are all family here. We throw that term around, but we don't loosely. Um, even our competitors have reached out to me. You know, this yep. is a very competitive yep. business, folks. You know that. Um, they've reached out because they feel the loss for us. Oh, they've um, helped us today. In fact. They really have. I'll cover us. the story. You know. So how are you guys doing? Processing. You yeah. know, to do it uh, on live television. And as we were talking about, we kind of knew. Well, we did. We knew what was going on, right? But until the family could get that word. Uh, obviously, we were going to have to hold that in. So to hold that in for two or three hours until we could finally, you know, let the public know has just been been devastating. But as we've been pointing out, Al, and you know this as well as anyone, the Jason you saw oh, yeah. on television mm -hmm. uh, is the Jason Myers when the camera wasn't on, always up, always smiling, always yeah. talking about his family. That's exactly right. You know, always, and, and and Chip's the same way. You know, yep. Chip. We're all WBTV, but Chip really there. You see him on the left, consummate pro. 90% of the time, he was out in the hangar or out on the pad, tinkering, working, checking, 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 triple checking. Yeah. Um, but Jason sat right here next to me, and that's one of the hardest things. I walked in the door here just this afternoon, and uh, uh, Jason and I had lockers right next to each other. His jacket's still oh, there. Wow. Um, but, you know, he is, uh, it's tough right now. It just really is. But you're so right. Um, Talk about two positive people right there, yeah. and I know a lot of people have said this, and I just want to echo that. Um, these guys were consummate pros, but they were also just genuinely a great, great guys um, to be around and have as teammates. You could not have asked for a better teammate. Um, when a job opens at WBTV, you literally get thousands of people who want to come here. And so we did our homework when, we, when you know, I was personally involved, as was Eric and our management here, yeah. about recruiting Jason. And he wanted, like you said, Molly, mm -hmm. he wanted to come home. Mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is home. His parents are still in this area. You know, he job. grew up watching the station. This is a dream job. And not everybody gets to do that, but uh, he wanted to be here. And, you know, I, <laughs> we have a recycle bin in the Weather Center <laughs> because we go through a lot of paper. This guy, every single day, would put down what looks like chicken scratch to everybody else. <laughs> but that's how much right. he paid attention to detail. Absolutely. When I think of him, you know, it's always that bright smile. Hey, buddy, how you doing? And, he, and he's genuine, not just, hey, how you doing? 
He meant it. He wanted to know what was going on in your life, and he would share with you what's going on in his life. But each and every day, he took so much pride and passion in getting the forecast right. And and is that a forecast? Are those that's numbers? From, that's the notes temperatures from, that's and from, notes from yesterday? That's, that's from yesterday. And that's, that's from yesterday. Well, and he'd walk around in the afternoons after you had left. He'd have this clipboard, right, and all oh these gosh. notes. And he'd stop by uh, everybody's desk first of all, say hello. That was always the first thing. You want to know how you were doing first, and then, and then we'd get into you know the business of the day and the weather and all those kinds of things. But he was, like I say, meticulous with the notes and everything else, and sharing all that information. It's just the way he was. Yeah, he, he really he he was. Um, and you know he was a, he was a guy that really paid attention to detail. You know, sometimes we would get into friendly arguments about a degree or two, you know? Right. And I said, I made a comment to him just last week and said, you know, I used to say nobody was good enough to know the difference between 71 and 72. I said, but Jason, you might be good enough <laughs> at that because he put so much time. Um, and just, you know, as, as a team, I have uh, I've spoken with Alicia Wilson and uh, obviously Becca, who did a ph phenomenal job under the circumstances. You know, that's a 25-year-old young lady right there, mm. uh, more like a daughter to me than a, than a, a co-worker. And, and Rachel, um, you know, as chief meteorologist, like I said, they don't prepare you for a day like this, no. but um, this is more about uh, just seeing how everybody's doing right now. And yeah, we're all in a state of shock right now. And um, as I said to Eric, um, we'll get through this. I just don't know how right now. I honestly don't know how. That's not even a fair thought to have right now. But I'm just, for his family and, uh, and, and you know, the two families involved, my heart just breaks. I don't it, it think we need to know how, you know, yeah. how Jamie said earlier, give some grace yeah. and we're just, all processing and learning. Yeah. yeah. Um, because really it, you know, we were talking with Jason and Chip hours ago. And so right, here we Alan. are now. And I, it's just we mentioned earlier, Jason's coming to the community, Al, and oh this past gosh. weekend, he was at a March of Dimes event. Yeah, I was supposed to be Al there. Al was supposed to be there with his <laughs> wife, Tracy, as well. And Jason and Jillian were there and my husband Wes and I were there and um, Jillian and Jason talked to Wes mostly. I was sort of up, up doing some we stuff doing with the event, thing, right? but yeah. um, on the way into work, I called Wes and told him and said, um, I've got bad news and here's what happened. And he um, got really emotional. He said, I just talked about their kids for two hours with them on Saturday night um, because they were so family oriented, but yet Saturday night went out to help raise money for preemies, be a part of a community event. And it was just, I, I hope people understand, and we've talked about it a little bit before, but if you are just happening to tune in and hear us, you know, facts, meteorologist, accuracy, formal, have to have that all down pat, but also human in yeah, the mm -hmm. community, right. caring, wanting to get involved, raising your hand every time to be a volunteer, mm -hmm. Jason, reading books to kids in schools, doing the visits, you know, right. yeah, um, bringing he, his wife along, wanting to have everybody together. Yeah, Jason was that kind of a person. And again, uh, just, you know, our jobs, yeah, we're, we sit, I sit at this desk, you sit here, you sit there, and you know, John and Mary, we all have our slots. When we leave here, and you guys know this so mm -hmm. well, we're part of the community. We have to be part of the community. That's not just delivering weather reports and traffic reports and news reports. Part of being a broadcaster is to being out there in this community and getting to know it. And these two gentlemen love this community. Their families did as well. They embraced it. And, you know, you may not know Chip because he was behind the scenes kind of a person. You know the, you know, the people here on TV. For every one of us, there's six or eight people behind the scenes mm -hmm. that, that, that work so hard to bring us the news. And Chip was one of those guys. Um, and, and Jason, just you know him. And uh, he just, like you said, Molly, he just embraced all of what it meant to be a meteorologist. Um, uh, you know, he left a chief's job in Kentucky to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, yep. he wanted to be here. And he wanted to raise his kids in this community just like you do and like I do and you do, Jamie. Yeah. And so um, it's just... Uh, yeah, he, he jumped because the job doesn't come open very often, as you mentioned, and he wasn't going to pass it up um, at all. And we were talking about this earlier. Alex brought it up, you know, as a new father, yeah. a new parent, you know, and he would ask Jason questions about, you know, being a parent and those kinds of things. And our kids, various ages right. as well, and we all kind of go through we those all, We stages. all went through it, that's yeah, we right. We go through those stages of life where we ask, we lean on each other. And I know his kids obviously meant the world to him, you know, playing sports years ago. Soccer, soccer, sports. soccer, yeah. Soccer, yeah, you know. soccer, soccer field, that. soccer field, yeah. soccer field. You know, you know, two weeks ago when Nicole came blowing through, he wasn't here on Friday. That Friday when the storm was raging, 
he was in Savannah, and I said, you know, it's important. Go down there. You be with you. We got this. Yeah. And there's four of us here. But see, that's you, the you need to be in Savannah, and you need to right. be with your kids, and you need to go down there and, and, and do the soccer thing. We, yeah. it's, a, it's rain, it's wind. We'll get through it. We always right. do. Love that you said that to him as a chief meteorologist and kind of I know he felt bad. Right. <laughs> right. He, he wants to be, to be here. You he know? wanted to be here. Yeah. But you saying no, be there. And uh, now, knowing he was there, it, <sighs> It's another memory that it's they have as a family. It's another memory they have in And that's the thing, field. he loved the outdoors around here, and obviously no better place than the Carolinas, right, to get outside and hike and bike that's and right. ski, you know, and, and all of those things. And that's how you <laughs> learn the intricacies of this place. But, you know, yeah. um, I don't know. There's something cathartic about being here. I just, uh, this is the best I have felt since about 12.05. We can said, smile you know, about his memory. Um, right? I've cried a thousand tears today. Mm -hmm. my, I know my face is a mess. I've just... Um, I feel so at home though being here um, with you guys. It makes sense. You talking came about here. our coworkers. Yeah. You didn't I, know where to go. You came here. I, I really did the didn't know where else to go. I, um, I really want to be here with you guys, and and also just to really see our, like I said, for every one of us out here, there's six or eight people in that newsroom mm -hmm. right now. And we're all yes. we're all you know from from top floor to bottom. Everybody is hurting right now. You said um, people don't know Chip, and and you guys don't. He was a helicopter pilot. He was a contracted employee for BTV, but had been here. For years and years, long, long time. Yeah. Like he was a WBTV employee, he would come into the newsroom all the time. We all knew him. Hey, Chip. Hey, Jamie and Chip spoke this morning. Yeah. Um, but you did see his work, yeah. and you saw his work all the time. Jamie, you made this point a couple hours ago before we, um, when we had first announced the names and confirmed the names of the deaths. Chip's work was everywhere, all over our newscast. So you might not have known Chip, but you did see his talent and you saw his contributions. And he's a part of our family, and our hearts break for Chip's wife and their family as well. Yeah. Um, it's it's Jason is who we know, and you guys know, and you got to meet. And Chip is just as much a part of our family as as well. And so, want to make sure everyone knows we are grieving the loss of two friends today, and two families um, will be helping move forward as our as our newsroom goes ahead with this. You know, and I think to go back to what David Wisnett said here just a little bit ago about. Uh, maybe 20 minutes ago, you know, we've heard so many of our viewers and um, our competitors, and our former family members here at the station say, hey, we're praying for you. We are genuinely praying for you. I, the first thing I did was text my prayer group, you know, on my phone and said, hey, we need God's strength right now. Uh, Jason was a man of faith. Mm -hmm. He is strong in his faith. So as passionate as he was about his chicken scratch here, you know, figuring out the forecast, whether it's going right. to rain or not, at the end of the day, it's it's just weather, right? Um, it's our jobs, and we take it seriously. But he, he was so strong in his faith. He was just, he was stronger in his faith than he was in his forecasting, and he was a heck of a forecaster. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think he grew hard. up in a church as well. His um, mm -hmm. did his his father, I think. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think he was a pastor at, at a church, and it was just a real deep part of who Jason was, um, and his family certainly is. If I'm not mistaken, his father's either a active or a retired Methodist minister up in Rowan County. Uh, and I could be mistaken about that. And if I am, forgive me, but uh, deep rooted faith and uh, believed in prayer yeah. and um, just pray for his family and pray for all of us and, and Chip's family as well, because we're going to need it uh, to get through this. Um, we're, we're just in a state of shock right now, as, as, as you would be as well. Um, you know, and uh, the station's been here a long time. Yep. Um, we know we got a lot of people on our side. <laughs> um, we're usually on your side tonight. We kind of need you on our side, if I'm not asking too much. Well said. Uh, just last night we were talking about this earlier about what you know he was doing for us on the air. And matter of fact, we can uh, show you an example of his happy and, and energetic, amazing person that, that Jason is. Yeah, we spoke to him less than 24 hours ago, right here on air, Jamie, at the opening of uh, Carowinds Winterfest, and Jason was so excited for the holidays and seeing people so happy with their families, and he loved to convey mm -hmm. that to all of us on live TV. So this is just from yesterday. That's where we find meteorologist Jason Myers. All right, Jason, sub 50 already. Uh, maybe grab some hot chocolate, huh? Exactly. A little chilly out here, but a lot of fun. I mean, everybody out here, of course, has smiles. We've got the festive music going on. I'm out here trying to stay up. Uh, I'll say, here's some tips for ice skating. Jamie, I think you'd probably be really good at this, right? Uh, but uh, the key is to not get too close to people that might drag you down on their way down. Um, I'm going to try to do a little trick for you guys. There we go. So, uh, yeah, we're having fun out here, of course, with the holiday music. And a lot of folks are having a great time out here. A lot of smiles going. 
going on and haven't fallen yet. So I be- probably better get off the ice skates uh, while, while I have a good track record here. <laughs> but I I, back to you fun. guys in the warm studio. A lot of fun yeah. out here. The pirouette there. Well done. Yeah, you, you stayed upright. That is the, the key. Come on out. Yeah, absolutely. Come on Keep out. Let's do the ice skating. Wire, okay, guys? Push and glide. Push and glide. You'll be okay. That is okay. Okay. The good. Good tip. Thanks. Bring you down. <laughs> oh, that's it right there. Push Just push, Benjamin's pushing glad. We're from Wisconsin. He's right. from North Carolina. We, yeah, we know he was that. leading on the hockey player from, from years gone by. Um, but that, that was him right there, right? But, and that, you never know, right? You never know. That was yesterday. I know. And we're all laughing and joking and, um, you know, just remember tell those you love you love them and and respect and tell them that you respect them and and give them a hug when you can and Al I love when you came on set and said first let me ask how you guys are doing and give you a hug because we didn't know yesterday what was going to happen today we didn't know this morning we didn't know this morning like I said you know I have a routine I I, I say my prayers 2 30 every morning mm-hmm. coming down the Brookshire freeway it, and you know you just you just don't know you right. don't know um and and so today we're, we're we're grieving and we're praying for for chip's family and, and for jason's family and uh you know we're family here and this mm-hmm. is what we do we just we're going to get through it somehow but right now it's just it's wrong we got to laugh a little bit I'm, I'm so glad you played that clip yeah. but uh it's tough it's really but that's what we were talking about with, with jason as a goodness, I have never heard that guy say a crossword no. about anyone or never. anything ever. He would come into that newsroom, and Molly and I were joking about what's he running for? Is he a politician? <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? He's always shaking just how you hand. shaking hands and always checking, making a touch point uh, with you every single day. Just a really, you know, uh, energetic and passionate, but in such a positive way. Right, right. Always got a smile. As you said, that's a great, that's a great description. Never a cross word. Never, you know, nothing disparaging to ever say about no. anybody. Just so positive and, and always, you know, for me as, as a chief, you know, I've been here almost 30 years, but I've been chief for one. He would come up to me and say, hey, I am a former chief in a smaller market, but yeah. what can I do to help you? Yeah. He I, always I, said that. What can I do to help you? He sincerely wanted that. to reach out and help. And he was a huge help. I would, I, more and more, I would lean on him because he is, you know, uh, for a lot of years, I was Eric Thomas's wingman. I need a wingman. And, and not to say that Becca and Alicia and Rachel aren't helpful. They certainly are. Yeah, They're great. Of course. They're considerably younger than, than Jason was, and he had that experience already. Mm-hmm. And so I really did lean on him quite a bit. Um, and uh, I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just so sad. And, um, and, and Chip, consummate professional, right. our helicopter pilot. And again, he, he was not technically uh, a, a, an employee of WBTV. It was a subcontract act. But listen, the guy was here every day for I don't know how many years. He was one many, of us. many years. Yeah. He's one of, one of us. us. Yeah. We all know Chip. WBTV family. That's right. You Witnesses know. keep telling us um, oh my God. That, the, that the pilot, that Chip, was a hero, Jamie. They just keep saying that over and over. Yeah, uh, this is pilot Chip Tag right here. He came to WBTV, we can tell you, more in 2017. He'd been a pilot for more than 20 years. Uh, when we say the WBTV family is grieving, we are truly a family. So whenever you saw Chip in the parking lot on the chopper launch pad, I just saw him this morning. As a matter of fact, and that's what he did. He smiled and he waved at me as he was getting ready uh, to take off again. He is survived by his uh, wife. And a matter of fact, you know, we were, and now you were alluding to the safety was paramount for him all of the time. And that was an interview we had actually done for him for On Your Side Tonight. Mm-hmm. I believe it was after the Kobe Bryant uh, loss. And, you know, just talking about that and what helicopter pilots go through to make sure everything is, you know, working as it should, you know, all of those sorts of things. So he was a great wealth of knowledge, obviously, that we leaned on in those kinds of situations as well. But always happy, always waving at you. Again, always making you feel seen, right, every single day uh, around here. And uh, it just crushes you. Uh, You know, and and for Chip, you know, you know, that's the weather center right there, and that's my office right there, right? right? And that's was Jason's. It's not far. J- yeah, it? it's, like it's literally 15 yards, feet yeah, back right. here. Um, so that's why we're always zipping in and out, and every, con- every once in a while when we're late, you see us on camera <laughs> coming up here late. Right. Chip's office was 50 yards that way, um, south side. It was a parking lot. Then we have, you know, our hangar where we housed mm-hmm. Sky 3 and, you know, the pad. Constantly working, you, you know. Envision, envision somebody that's got an antique vehicle that they are so much in love with that they they don't want to see a speck mm-hmm. of dust. On. That's the way he treated Sky Three. He was the consummate pro about you know just making sure everything was operational and it, you know because you never know. When with I'm Sky Three, you never. He's like, he, in a lot of ways like a first responder. Hey, we need you to go, and there's not well maybe in an hour. Or so. no. no, no, we need you to go right now. 
and he would always be Johnny on the spot. That's why you might not have known his name, but you knew his work. And always checking in on the weather, too, because obviously always. that was paramount for whether he could actually fly safely or not. So he was always checking in with you guys. That's right. He was, uh, it was always about safety. That's, that's when I would have more interaction with him than anything. We would cross paths. You know, he would come in in the morning, just like you do, and, yep. and, and Molly in the afternoon. And we would just cross paths. And, you know, he'd ask, hey, the ceiling's pretty low right now. When do you think that's going to mm -hmm. lift? When, in other words, when will it be safe for me to fly? Oh, yes, we're socked in low clouds right now. Chip, I don't see that for at least two hours. You may have breaking news, but you're not going anywhere. Right, and he wouldn't he would risk always it. Be right. Because he was safe. never risk. Always, no. always yeah. checking. And he was Fair managing enough. all of that, and we wouldn't send up the chopper if he said not to. I mean, it was always what Chip said and what Chip decided. Small. End of word. End of word. Yeah. End of word. He was, he was it. Hey, I know you said you talked to Eric. I talked to Eric as well. Have, how, how are Eric and... Rachel and Alicia, and again, Becca did a heck of a job live TV today. How's everyone doing who, have you, have you been able to talk to the rest of our team and our, our family? It's tough. Um, it's really tough when you think about it. Um, uh, Rachel, in particular, works side by side because, you know, yes, I'm the chief, but I work with Becca and in the morning, and, and Alicia sort of bridges the gap. Uh, but Rachel and Jason would come up with this chicken scratch here of your mm. forecast. This is the way we kind of do it. Everybody has their own style, but this is the way Jason did it. He would write out his numbers and figure out which, you know, which way we're going with the forecast. And they'd go back and forth. Um, so she, Rachel's really uh, having a hard yeah. time with this. Um, she's got a lot of faith, um, so she's, she's praying through this. And uh, Becca has uh, is really uh, done a great job, you know, mm. trying to work through uh, the 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 just the traffic because uh, we know people are trying right. to get around and uh, you know for somebody her age uh, I, I could not have been more impressed uh, such a pro uh, and Alicia had the day off but I did uh, I called her and uh, um, I hadn't had a chance to reach back out to circle back with her but I will uh, but uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're all having a hard time yeah, and I know Eric was in tears and I talked to him earlier good, today good. too and um, you know he was here, obviously, when Jason uh, got hired. Tell us more about that a little bit. I don't know if you remember when he oh, came yeah. for an interview, oh, yeah. what that was like and what that meant for him to come back yeah. um, to the Charlotte area. Yeah, when we say come back, you know, Jason was raised up in the Salisbury area. So even though he um, had worked in uh, Richmond and then had gone over into Kentucky to become a chief meteorologist in a smaller market in Lexington, um, in a lot of ways, <clears throat> our, our careers kind of mirrored. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was in Miami, but I came to Charlotte. So I'm like, wait a minute, Miami's a much bigger market. Sometimes in football, punt is a good play, right? You say, you know what, let me go backwards a little bit in market, but come up in stature sure. a little bit, you know, in, in, a, in a different role. He was chief meteorologist in Lexington, but this was home, and it meant more for him to raise his family here with his grandparents, uh, with, with their grandparents, um, and to be on a station that he grew up watching I mean, you're just checking off boxes here. Yeah, absolutely. And that guy was not going to be denied that job. Mm. He blew everybody else out of the water in terms of interviewing because he was exactly who he was. Positive, um, energetic, passionate each and every you know, day. And we just, Eric and I um, and our management team at the time just said, I think that's the guy. Um, you know, it wasn't even close, really, honestly. Right. Um, and again, this is, you know, I got here 30 years ago. This was market 33, meaning this, you know, New York's number one, LA's number two. This is now market 21. Um, when we have a job opening here, um, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of people that apply for these jobs. So it yeah. is an extremely competitive business. That guy just separated himself. Yeah. Jason, he separated himself. Right. And so, uh, and he was earning it each and every day that, um, just reinforcing in our minds that we made the exact right hire. Same way, that's why he came in every day and basically said hello with a handshake. And you're like, Jason, we right. know each other. Yeah, yeah, Buddy, I mean, we're yeah. friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> we but, don't need to shake hands. But he did it out of love, and yeah. he did it because we called well, him the mayor. He yeah. was just so happy to always, see you. I always said, you're running for office. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in a kind, in a joking, in, yeah, a, in, a, in a loving way. He pressed the flesh all the time. And he knew and he it. Would he stop. was doing like. Yeah. He well, would stop. He didn't mean just, hey, how you doing going down the hallway. He would stop. How are you doing? No, he, doing and he, okay, met, he right? looked in the eye, right? And right. Think about it, right? You've landed what you've always wanted. I mean, the you job. know, he just embraced that every single day here uh, at WBTV. There was nowhere else he wanted to be. Like you said, he, now his kids could be with his parents, you know, and all those milestones that are going on, you know, every other year, right, with the kids of that age and so much is going on. And I mean, for Jillian and all of them, it's yeah. just, I, 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 there, are no, there are no words uh, that we can come up with that's going to 
you know, make them feel any better at, at this time. And I'm just thinking about them and the holidays are here and all of that. And like we were talking about, none of us expected this today. I you think certainly, we, yeah. she didn't either, obviously, as the, you know, the day started that, you know, you, we aren't firefighters and police officers and in the ser military service where we risk our lives for our job. So it's, uh, it's just devastating when something like this happens. Yeah, it really is. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, my pastor was kind enough to give me a call on the way over here just to check on me and said, you know, it, it always seems, I know this is, it seems harder when, when the holidays are right around the corner. And I know Jason and I talked about um, walking with Storm 3 tomorrow night with uh, Rachel and Becca in, in the parade. parade. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really looking forward to that because, you know, we work opposites tides of the day. You know, we would see each other kind of in passing or we would text or email, you know, hey, hey, watch Thursday. I think this is, kind, you know, and he was always kind of looking to the next thing. What's going to happen next? And so I'm going to just miss that. But um, it's such a, um, you know, it shouldn't be any harder today than if it were some other month. But, of course, um, right. you know, as I said, when I came on here, 28 minutes ago, I just had left my family who's on their way down to the mm. coast because I was going to meet up with them for Thanksgiving. Um, and, you know, so your mind is, you know, already thinking about, you know, what we're doing, a, you know, a Thanksgiving Eve parade tomorrow night, right? And it's just, my mind's just not thinking about this and it makes it just harder for me to process right now. Chief Jennings said that, Pol CMPD Chief yeah. Jennings. Right, he right. said, I mean, it's a tough week to have this happen. It's tough no matter when, but this is the week that um, it's it's really hard because we're, we come together, we're right? coming together we're and you're coming, being yeah. grateful and you're thankful and you're with family and friends in theory. Um, and so that's really hard for the two people who died in this helicopter crash. He did not release the identities at that point. We have had a lot of statements come in. Governor Cooper sent condolences and I think the Panthers and Charlotte FC um, are still scheduled to hold their annual Christmas tree lighting outside, but they did release a statement ahead of the event tonight saying, quote, our thoughts are with our friends at WBTV on the loss of Jason Myers and Chip Tagg. We will have a moment of silence mm. at tonight's mm. tree lighting in their honor. So to Charlotte FC and the Panthers, thank you for that. And to all the condolences. And I know your phones are like, yeah. I, it just, but- I had to turn it off, to be honest with um, <laughs> We are feeling it and we appreciate it. And it is a community. Um, for them to do that too, I mean. That's well, that's the kind statement. of event right there. The tree you know? lighting. That, 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 that Jason, that would, Jason have been would have been at. I know, in right. fact, he might have been slated to be there. I don't know. I, I don't know, but if it's not that, it would have been a parade. If it wasn't thing. that, it would have been where y'all were Saturday night with the March of Dimes event or, or some other, or your kid's school or, you know, somewhere, um, some fundraiser uh, he would have lent his name to because he was that kind of a guy, just a genuine person. Uh, and uh, what you see is what you get. You and know, those and statements really mean a lot to our WBTV family in our newsroom and, and hopefully, you know, to, to Jason and Chip's family when they are in a position where maybe they can process some of that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, they do help and, and thank you. And we, we, all of us appreciate the community that's, that's reaching out because it is really tough. It's really tough. You don't ever plan to cover a helicopter crash where your two friends are on board and you're figuring it out on live TV and a newsroom is processing how to most respectfully honor what happened while we're laying the information about traffic and delays and the police staging area and the federal investigators behind the scenes. So um, we, we really thank Charlotte, the community, these statements and just people reaching out in the ways that you can. But even if you don't reach out, send a good thought. Send a good thought to Jason and Chip's family, please. Yeah. Send a really good thought to them. As, as Al and David before him mentioned, uh, we'll take prayers. Uh, the Myers family, the Tayag family, they're going to take all the prayers you can throw their way as well. And as David was so eloquently pointing out, we feel it. You know, you we feel do. it. You feel it when you, you post on social media or uh, just your prayers in general. They get through and they do make a difference and it's they a do help us get through it. It's a source of strength for us. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, we need it um, because we're an extended family. Um, his, these two gentlemen, their families definitely need it. Um, and, uh, but, but you hear us throw that around a lot here. And I, I know. I'm sure they're kind of family-like at the other stations too, but we really do mean it. I mean, we know each other. We've known each other for a long time, and even those that were here and have moved on, we still keep in touch with yeah. because we care about one another. We, we, you know, genuinely, in most instances, we love one another. We know each other's families, yep. you know, and so this is, um, it's extremely hard. It really is. Um, 